this is bath 99 this is supplement uh, 2a for it and we are we're graphing we've, we've done some things about talking about parent functions for example we know what y equals x squared looks like you know it goes through zero zero and grows like that over one up one over one up three over one up five uh, or y equals <laughs> equals the absolute value of x we know that it also goes through zero zero and then goes up at this over one up one over one up one like that so now what we're going to do is we're going to start to do some um, some transformations on these. So we're going to kind of move them around. Like what happens when I say y equals x squared plus 5? How can I take uh, this parent graph and then sketch what that's going to look like just for me in the equation? So we're starting to do is develop a, kind of a fluency with these functions, being able to read it and make some some visualization and make some sense about what it's saying about the change. So I'm going to uh, step over to Desmos, my favorite graphing program. We'll do some examples. So here's Desmos. And uh, if I had something like y equals uh, absolute value of x. Actually, we did x squared. y equals x squared. There's a graph of it. See, it goes through the 0, 0, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5 keeps going like that and goes forever. So I could talk about the domain and the range of this of this shape as well. So uh, for example, my my domain here, that's my all my possible inputs. Remember for inputs, uh, the only things I had to worry about was taking the square root of a negative and dividing by zero. Neither one's happening here. So my domain um, I can say it runs from negative infinity to infinity. I could also say it's all real numbers. Uh, that's sometimes written like this. That's the symbol for the reals. That's an R <laughs> with like a double bar going down. And if I talk about the range, this is all the possible outputs. And I notice here that like it goes to this point zero and then it just goes up. It doesn't go down from there. So my range would be from zero to infinity. Great. So back to this. Um, so I'm curious what's going to happen if I go y uh, equals x squared. There's that same graph. I'm going to turn the graph off so it doesn't show. And then it says plus 5. So I'm adding 5 outside of the function. And what's interesting about that is y equals x squared, that just spits out a bunch of y values. But then if I say y equals x squared plus 5, what I'm doing is I'm taking a each of these y values, each of these height, then I'm adding five to them. So for example, this would go up to five, or this point that's at one, one would go up five to here, et cetera. So I'm gonna pull this back over to the graph. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking all of these y values, I'm adding five to them. So if I add five to this one, it's now up here. If I add five to this one, it's all up here. But notice like the, the, the basic shape, if I add five to here, it's up here. The basic shape doesn't change. So what happens is the whole thing just gets shifted up five. So this adding five takes that shape and it shifts it up five. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks like that. The whole, it's the original parent function moved up five. So adding five on the outside of the function moves it up. Um, and if I do domain and range on this one, domain is the same. I'm not dividing. I'm not square rooting. So the domain is anything. But notice my range has shifted now. It's at 5 going up. So my range is from 5 up to infinity. And what's great about this is, uh, you know, let's think about instead of adding 5, what if I only add 2? Shifts it up 2. Or add it 7. Shifts it up 7. Or if I subtract 3, it moves it down 3. And what's great is this, uh, this outside, it doesn't matter what my original shape was. So, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to turn this off for a sec. So let's say that my original shape was uh, absolute value of x. Well, if I go absolute value of x minus 3, it's just going to shift that shape down 3. No matter what this original parent function is, 
if I subtract 3 from it or add 3 to it, it's going to move it up and down. So I could run through all of my all of my uh, my parent function square root moves it down three. So one thing that I know then is uh, that if I have some function and I add something outside of the function, it moves it up and down. If I told you that I had the function uh, y plus one over x plus seven. Well, let me think about the parent function for this. The parent function for y over x, that inverse, that reciprocal, looks like this. And I have this asymptote here at 0. So plus 7 would just shift the whole thing up 7. But now what I would have is my asymptote up here at 7, and then the shape just shifted up by 7. So anything that goes on outside moves my shape up and down. So great, now let's then, um, instead of doing things outside the function, let's do things inside the function. So for example, uh, there's my x squared, my parent, and uh, here's y equals x squared as well. I'm gonna turn it off so we can't see it. But now what I'm gonna do is stuff before the function gives it its shape, I'm gonna say x plus three inside the function. Now before, when I was outside the function, I was telling you I was affecting the y values because like the squaring or the absolute valuing, whatever this function does, gives it its shape, spits out y values. But here I'm messing with the x values. I'm actually making, um, making changes in the x before they get turned into y's. And this is a little counterintuitive. I, I think when most people see this initially, they're gonna think, oh, it's just gonna move it right three. But it doesn't actually move it right three. It moves it left three. So uh, what's interesting to me about this one is this plus three is actually making things happen earlier than they usually would happen. For example, like when x is negative three, if I plug a negative three into, into here, notice I'm evaluating it. I'm, what I'm squaring is the zero, not the negative three, because I have to add three to it. So this makes things actually happen um, earlier, if you think about this as time, than they would have. A um, couple of ways to remember this, if it goes on inside, it's the opposite, or I like to think of it as the x value that I'm plugging into this that would make this thing a zero. The zero is kind of like my pivotal piece, my pivotal shape of this. And what's great is whatever I do inside, like I said, move it left, right. If I say plus three, it moves it to the left three. If I say plus five, it moves it to the left five. If I say minus four, it's going to move it to the right four. It's kind of... Uh, Kind of fun to make a little slider here for h and just let it let those h values switch and see how it moves it around and it doesn't matter again what my parent function is so let's say again that i had a, i don't know square root of x and if i go square root of x minus four that's going to move it right four so it'll move it to there so this point that was at zero zero i'm just thinking of grabbing it and moving it to the right four and moving the whole rest of the shape with it. If it was absolute value, absolute value parent function, uh, sorry, looks like that. Absolute value of x plus five gets shifted to the left five. And again, what I like to think about is I'm just moving it off that zero, zero spot. Great, so thinking about that then, I have another thing that goes on. If I have uh, some f of uh, x, and notice I'm going to write minus h because um, it's the opposite of this value. This moves it left, right. So here's what I really like. Like, let's say I had um, f of x equals, and I'll grab one of my parent functions, uh, square root of x minus 3 plus 5. So I notice my, my parent function. In other words, like this square root, this is the thing that gives it its shape. My parent function is f of x equals root x. And I know that this looks like this, over 1 up 1, over 3 up 1, over 5 up 1. But now as I look at this, this is going to move it. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
Uh, this is going to move it left, right. And this is going to move it up, down. So things that go on inside the function, this means that this will move right three. And things that go on outside the function, this move, means it will move up five. So this point that was at zero, zero is going to get moved right three, up five. It's going to now be at the point three, five. Right? Right three, up five. So over three, up five, I'll label the point and make the shape of it. And now no matter what my parent function was, that will happen every time. So for example, let's say that this was, uh, instead of square root, it was squared. That means my parent function would look like this, and my transformed function would just be that same shape, moved the same amount. Or if this was, uh, I don't know, cube root. You know, I know that I know that the cube root looks like this. It just got moved to here. So I can move things left, left, right, and I can also move them up, down with uh, with all of these uh, relationships. So what we can do now, I'm going to combine these. So I'm going to say if I have um, f of x minus h plus k. So I'm going to say g of x equals y. And I still have the same thing. Uh, if I move this, this moves me left, right. This takes my f function, whatever it is, moves it left, right. This takes my f function, whatever it is, moves it up, down. And now I have a new function, g, that's created off of that old function, f. And I'll know f. It'll be some, written something like uh, g of x equals absolute value of x uh, plus 3 minus 17. So the f here is absolute value. Like that's just the function. And what's going on is I'm, I'm adding 3 inside, subtracting negative 3, and I'm subtracting 17 outside. So we know that this g is a new function. It has the same shape as absolute value except it's been uh, moved to the left three and down 17. So what was at zero, zero is now at the point negative three, negative 17, and it goes like this. And then wherever my x and y axis are, they'd be like, I don't know, something like probably closer, something like that for x and y axis, but it's at that point, negative three, 17. So if I have this uh, Michael square root of x, and I say x uh, plus 4, and out here I'm going to say plus 7. That point that was at 0, 0 is up here now at 4, 7, uh, negative 4, 7. Just works like that. Uh, what's great is, like, if I make these dummies variables, h and k, on this I can make sliders out of them. And I can say as I move h, it moves my function left and right. And I, as I move k, it moves my function up and down. So if this said x plus 7, I can turn that into a 7. And then plus, instead of plus k, let's say it said uh, minus 4. And notice I can read my, um, I'll call it my vertex, what used to be my 0, 0 point, right off of it, negative 7, negative 4. Uh, I want to do domain and range on this one. So I have a square root of x plus 7 minus 4. So my function, since you know h is 7 and k is negative 4, is square root of x plus 7 minus 4. So my domain, I can think of my domain in here. It's like I can't, div I can't take the square root of a negative. So you know, as far as the function is I would solve when is this greater than or equal to zero. And basically, it's just what keeps this positive. So x has to be greater than or equal to uh, negative 7. And I can see that on the graph. Like if I look right here, my x values, notice x is all of this. So my domain is, uh, oh, inclusive, sorry from negative 7 all the way to infinity. And then my range, 
I could think similarly about that. My range, the lowest this thing gets is negative four. But it grows, it keeps growing without bound. Even though it, it looks like it's, it's not growing quite as fast, it's always going upwards. So this is gonna also go up to infinity. So now we have this great way to sketch, sketch some graphs. Uh, if I told you that y was the absolute value of x plus uh, 7 plus 3, well, this moved it left, right, this moved it up. The point that was at 0, 0 is now going to be at negative 7, 3, which would be back 7, up 3. Absolute value tells me the shape. And if I label that, there's my sketch of my graph. And no matter what the parent function is, it's just about how it moves. Great, now there's one more thing I wanna to add to this. Let's just go back to x squared. What happens if I uh, negate this thing? In other words, if I go y equals negative x squared, it just reflects it across the x-axis. All the y values are being negated. They're being turned negative. It's great. Uh, so same thing with, for example, if I have uh, absolute value. Just reflects it across the x-axis. And no matter what my function is, uh, that's, what it, that's what it does to it. Let's do it with square root. Uh, there's square root of x. And notice if I negate it out here, it flips it across. So things that happen outside the function affect the y values, a flip in the y direction. I'm going to make a note of that back here. Plus or minus, depending on if this is plus or minus, that tells me if it's going up or if it's going down. So if I wanted to graph, say, um, y equals negative square root of x plus 4 plus uh, 10. Let's think about what this is going to do. That negative is going to flip it across the x-axis, so it'll reflect it like this. So it's usually going like that, so it'll go like this now. That minus 4 will move, or that plus 4 will move it to the left 4, and that plus 10 should move it up 10. And there it is. Instead of going uh, up, it's going down. That's what this negative is telling us. And then the z what was 0, 0 is now at the point negative 4, 10. Let's do domain and range for this. And I can do, I'm going to do domain and range just by looking at the graph. The domain are those x values. So notice it starts at negative 4, inclusive, and goes to infinity. And then uh, ranges those y values. It's here at 10, and it's going down forever. So 10, and since it's going down now, it goes towards negative infinity. There's domain and range. You can see them real easily from the graph if I collapse onto the y-axis and collapse onto the x-axis. Well, let's just do a little hand sketch of, a, uh, of an equation. Um, y equals negative x minus 3 quantity squared minus 2. So I know my parent function is a quadratic, is a, is a square, parabola. This is going to reflect it across the x. This is going to move it right 3, and this is going to move it down 2. So uh, this point right here, so this point that's that's here that used to be my 0, 0, uh, that is now the point 3, negative 2. And it's parabola, but instead of going up, now it goes down. There's a sketch of it. Domain and range. Domain can be anything. I can plug anything I want into this. So negative infinity to infinity. And my range, the highest it gets is negative 2. So negative 2 inclusive, and it's going down. So down to negative infinity. One last idea I want to add. You can, um, you can negate inside a function as well. So let's get that square root of x back on here again. Now notice if I negate inside the function, inside is going to affect x. It'll flip it across the y-axis. All the x values have been negated.
So um, same sort of things apply. Um, what's interesting about this one is many of our shapes have um, symmetry across the y-axis. So if I negate on the inside here, it doesn't matter because if I, if I flip it this way, it maps back onto it. So give these some good practice, practice being able to sketch them and be able to recognize them. Next time we'll talk a little bit more about stretching them in this direction as well. Um, do that Desmos practice, it, it's good. And uh, post any questions that you have.